arguably the most iconic words in the gaming world. You can't kill me! Well, if Grand Theft Auto never existed. What? From the trenches of World War II to the far reaches of futuristic battlefields, Call of Duty took us through the dramatic intensity of modern conflict since 2003. Lock and load as today we dive into violence and epicness. This is the complete Call of Duty timeline explained. We're on the verge of the biggest operation of the entire war. First things first, let's clarify two things. One, the Call of Duty series consists of 33 games and, drumroll please, 14 different timelines. Our story begins on September 1st, 1939, when a certain somebody that we can't name if we want to keep this video monetized decides to invade Poland. This triggers the Second World War, which serves as the main decor for the OG Call of Duty games. But mainly Call of Duty World at War, Call of Duty World War II and Call of Duty Vanguard. Most of the games' events take place between 1942 and 1945, evolving around different characters' perspectives of the war. In Call of Duty World at War, we dive inside the war horrors through the eyes of US Private C. Miller and Russian Private Dmitry Petrenko, in a game that truly narrates the cruel and gruesome aspects of World War II. In Call of Duty World War II, we incarnate Ronald Red Daniels, who struggles to keep his humanity intact while evolving in a context where he could lose his best friend and never witness the birth of his child. Call of Duty Vanguard narrates the story of Task Force Vanguard, a secret team created to thwart the Project Phoenix, an operation of British Sergeant Arthur Kingsley, Russian Lieutenant Paulina Petrova, Australian Private Lucas Riggs, and US First Class Lieutenant Wade Jackson. In May 1945, during the Battle of Berlin, Dmitry Petrenko planted the Soviet flag at the top of the Reichstag as a symbol of Germany's defeat. Around the same period, the Vanguard Task Force took out Hermann Freysinger, the leader of Project Phoenix, which was a secret plan to strengthen the German forces after their unnameable leader's death. On September 2, 1945, a few weeks after the Empire of Japan's unconditional surrender, World War II officially ended with the Allies' victory. Now, those who followed in history class know the aftermath of World War II saw tensions between the US and Soviet Union rising dramatically. This led to decades of a war where the belligerents were officially at peace but clearly tried to destroy each other in the sneakiest ways possible. The Cold War era begins and is the main decor for Call of Duty Black Ops and Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. I think I'm ready to ruin someone's day. In this context, on the 17th of April 1961, the US launched the failed Bay of Pigs operation to overthrow Fidel Castro's regime in Cuba. But after the US defeat, Russian agents managed to capture some US operatives. In 1962, these US operatives were secretly brainwashed into Russian sleeper agents with various missions including assassinating President Kennedy and releasing Nova 6 on US soil. Among these sleeper agents, there's Alex Mason, the main protagonist of Call of Duty Black Ops. The game revolves around Alex's memories of his captivity, the acts he supposedly committed as a Russian sleeper agent like a hinted implication in President Kennedy's death in November 1963, and finally his redemption to his country by dismantling the Russian sleeper agents in February 1968, thus preventing Nova 6 deployments in the US. Thirteen years later, in 1981, the Cold War is still going strong and US President Ronald Reagan puts together an elite task force to take down Soviet operatives and particularly the dangerous Soviet spy, codenamed Perseus, who learned the existence of a top-secret CIA program named Project Greenlight. Long story short, it consists of detonating several nuclear bombs in Europe as an emergency measure to prevent a Soviet invasion. We don't just sit back and hope for the best. We'll make the best happen. CIA, right? This leads to the events of Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. The protagonist, codenamed Bell, is a former associate of Perseus who acquired access to Project Greenlight nukes and now plans to detonate them in order to reverse the world power balance. After surviving an attempt on life by a jealous associate, Bell is subjected to the CIA's MKUltra program, creating false memories and a new identity. Bell then joins the task force created by the President and led by Agent Sandler, alongside Alex Mason, Frank Woods and Jason Hudson. Depending on the player's choices, Bell, who suffers identity crisis from the brainwashing he went through, 
will either return to his former self and betray the task force and allow Perseus' plan to succeed, or prevent the nuclear catastrophe by betraying him. It was always for the greater good. Five years later, in 1986, the events from Call of Duty Black Ops 2 prologue took place. Alex Mason had retired from duty to live a secluded life in Alaska with his seven-year-old son, David Mason. But his handler pulls him out of retirement to take part in a mission in Angola during the Angolan Civil Wars and South Africa Border Wars. The goal is to save Frank Woods and his team, who went missing. Despite retrieving Woods alive, his whole team is dead, and the responsible is Raul Mendez, a dangerous Nicaraguan drug lord who vows a deep hate for the Western world. Later, Mason, Hudson and Woods are sent to Nicaragua to halt the Menendez cartel, but things take a chaotic turn leading to many civilian casualties, including Menendez's sister being killed by a grenade launched by Woods. Still in 1986, the earliest events from the first Modern Warfare trilogy took place after the Chernobyl disaster, with Lieutenant John Price failing an assassination attempt on Russian arms dealer Imran Zakhaev, which left the latter losing his left arm in the process. Three years later, in 1989, during the invasion of Panama, seeking revenge for his sister's death, the drug lord kidnapped David Mason and Hudson to bait Alex and Woods into a trap. This will lead to Hudson sacrificing his life and Menendez crippling Woods. We flash forward to the 2010s for the events of the first Modern Warfare trilogy. The year is 2011 and guess what? A civil war erupts in Russia between the government and ultra-nationalists, led by Imran Zakhaev, aiming to restore Soviet-style leadership. At the same time, in Saudi Arabia, Khaled al-Assad takes control of the country in a very delicate way which is by executing the president on live TV. Yeah, fears of an alliance with Zakhaev to use nuclear weapons to conquest start rising in the West. In response, the US and UK conduct joint operations to quell both uprisings and safeguard their nation's security. Their first effort will end up in a tragic failure in the Middle East, as an assault in the Arabic capital will be thwarted by nuclear detonation, killing Sergeant Paul Jackson and 30,000 other soldiers. Later, the Sergeant John Soap McTavish is tasked with finding and capturing Khaled al-Assad in Azerbaijan alongside John Price and Yuri. There, it's revealed that Imran Zakhaev is actually Al-Assad's supplier. The latter is then killed by Price. Afterwards, the squad tries to capture Zakhaev's son, Victor, to locate his father, but he shoots himself in the head to avoid being captured. Well, that's brutal, but certainly effective. In retaliation for his son's death, Zakhaev orders his ultra-nationalists to take control of a missile launch facility, and I think you'll guess where this is going. He plans to launch two IBCMs on the United States, which could cause 40 million casualties. Fortunately, Soap, Price and other military teams manage to abort the launch just in time. But as they're trying to escape the site, they're ambushed by Zakhaev in person. After a desperate situation, Soap kills the Russian leader in Extremis. All these events took place in a six-day span and were all kept secret to the public. But five years later in 2016, for the events of Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, despite Zakhaev and Al-Assad's death, the situation has gotten worse, and the ultra-nationalists took control of Russia and instaurated a cult of personality around them, Imran Zakhaev, as a fallen hero. In the meantime, Vladimir Makarov, one of Zakhaev's fiercest lieutenants, is reaping terror across Europe with various terrorist attacks. In this context, one of the biggest SOB in all of gaming history, the General Shepard, had the brilliant idea of placing a young first-class private, named Joseph Allen, as an undercover spy in Makarov's organization. On August 12, 2016, Allen takes part in a civil massacre at the Zakhaev International Airport in Russia to earn Makarov's trust. But the latter is really hard to fool and kills Allen, whose body will later be identified as American by the Russian government. This, in addition to Makarov asking his squad to use American weapons and speak English during the assault, made Russia believe in the US involvement in the attack. This will lead to Russia leading a surprise invasion on the east coast of the United States. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is how one man's choice crafted World War III. Simultaneously, SOD Task Force 141 focuses on Makarov, 
They discover that Prisoner 627, a bitter enemy of Makarov, is held in a Russian gulag. They plan to break Prisoner 627, revealed as Captain Price, free. Price joins the task force and they undertake bold missions, including hijacking a Russian nuclear submarine on August 14th, 2016, to launch an EMP over Washington DC, to cripple both forces. The electromagnetic pulse triggers chaos and the Air Force plans to bomb Washington. Sergeant Foley and his squad prevent this by signaling control from the White House. Determined, the Rangers vow to retaliate against the Russians. Task Force 141 splits to hunt down Makarov. General Shepard, their superior, reaches a level of betrayal even Judas would despise by killing Ghost and Roach. Price and Soap escape, facing the Shadow Company and remaining ultra-nationalists. They extract information from Makarov and embark on a final mission in Afghanistan, where they kill Shepard like the dog he is. Nikolai then arrives and they leave as fugitives. Which brings us to the events of Modern Warfare 3. After killing General Shepard, Price, Nikolai and the dying Soap evacuate from Afghanistan to a safe house in India. They face an attack by Makarov's forces but manage to escape with the help of Yuri, Nikolai's ally. The surviving members of Task Force 141 hide for two months while the world is embroiled in World War III. In parallel, Delta Force Metal Team, including Sergeant Derek Frost Westbrook, aids the Russian withdrawal from Lower Manhattan. They disable a jamming tower and hijack a Russian submarine to use against their fleet. As the war continues, Russian President Boris Vorchevsky's peace plans are thwarted when Makarov hijacks his plane, leading to a crash landing. Makarov kidnaps the president, planning to force him to provide launch codes for Russian nukes. Soap, recovering with the help of Yuri, follows Makarov's trail to Sierra Leone for an arms deal. On October 6, 2016, a biochemical weapon from Fregatta Industries was deployed in London, triggering a European invasion by the ultranationalists. Around the same moment, the Delta Force fought to save the US vice president in Hamburg and captured a Russian bomb maker in Paris, where the Eiffel Tower collapsed on October 9, 2016. In the meantime, Task Force 141 learns of Makarov's location in Prague and plans an assassination. The operation goes awry, resulting in Soap's death. In his last words, Soap revealed the connection between Makarov and Yuri, who then explained his past connections with Makarov and the ultra-nationalists to Price. You bought yourself some time. Later, on October 14, 2016, Task Force 141 joins forces with Delta Force to rescue the Russian president and confront him about ending the war. They succeeded, but at the cost of the Delta Force sacrifice. World War III officially ended at some point between October 14, 2016 and January 21, 2017. At this date, Price and Yuri track Makarov to a hotel in the Arabian Peninsula. A fierce battle ensues, with the hotel collapsing. Yuri sacrifices himself to give Price a chance to catch Makarov. In a final confrontation, Price hangs Makarov and silently smokes a cigar as police sirens echo in the background. Marking the end of the conflict and the end of the greatest trilogy in FPS history. But in an alternate universe in July of the same year, a space-based superweapon called Odin strikes the United States, destroying the southwestern part of the country and major cities like San Diego are erased from the map. This is the trigger event for Call of Duty Ghosts. Two years later in 2019, in yet a similar universe, the soft reboot Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2019 kicks off. In October 2019, CIA operative Alex's mission to recover chemical weapons in Verdansk is foiled, prompting CIA station Chief Kate Laswell to seek aid from British SAS Captain John The Goat Price. Simultaneously, London faces an Al Qatala terrorist attack handled by SAS Sergeant Kyle Gaz Garrick with Captain Price's assistance. The narrative unfolds with missions in Urzikstan, revelations about Farah Karim's It'll do. An Urkistani soldier and ally, Brother Hadir. He is in fact responsible for the chemical weapons theft that Alex and Price thwarted at the beginning of the game. The game climaxes with a daring assault on a Russian gas factory. Aware of the danger of Russian ultranationalists, Price forms an elite team named Task Force 141, consisting of Gaz John Soap McTavish and Simon Ghost Riley. The gang is back! 
Which leads us three years later in July 2022 to the events of Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. In July 2022, Task Force 141, led by the Rat Incarnated, General Herschel Shepard, conducts a surgical missile strike in Al Masra, eliminating Iranian General Gorbrani. The pursuit of Gorbrani's vengeful lieutenant, Hassan Ziani, takes the team from Amsterdam to Mexico, unveiling alliances and being once again betrayed by Shepard and the Shadow Company. Later, after thwarting Hassan Ziani's and an Iranian terrorist missile attack on the Pentagon, Task Force 141 are still doing their best to prevent a global conflict from happening. They discover the face of the new ultra-nationalist leader, the man behind Shepard, Bot Treachery, and the prisoner number 627 of the Zordaya prison complex leader, a face Price immediately recognizes as a certain Vladimir Makarov. Makarov. Yikes. One year later, in November 2023, in the tumultuous events of the latest installment of the franchise, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 takes place. The Russian private military company, Connie Group, launches a brazen assault on the Zordaya prison complex, liberating their imprisoned commander, Vladimir Makarov. The aftermath triggers a series of interconnected crises, compelling Task Force 141, led by the season John Price, to embark on a globe-spanning mission to thwart Makarov's nefarious plans. Their journey takes them from the shores of Verdansk to the port of Urzikstan where Farah Karim, Alex Keller and the Urzikstan Liberation Force are entangled in a high-stakes endeavor to secure ballistic missiles from the elusive Shadow Company and their enigmatic leader, Philip Graves. Despite the theft of the missiles, Farah manages to deploy trackers, setting the stage for a relentless pursuit. Learning of Makarov's escape, CIA Station Chief Kate Laswell joins forces with Price leading 141 to an abandoned nuclear power plant believed to harbor nuclear material from the late General Roman Barkov. However, the discovery takes an ominous turn when they realize the plant houses deadly chemical materials, part of Barkov's legacy, and Makarov's intent to craft a devastating chemical weapon. Intrigue deepens as Laswell infiltrates the Arklov military base to unravel Makarov's plans, obtaining crucial information about Barkov's chemical weapons. Simultaneously, Makarov orchestrates a disturbing act of terror, downing a Kastovian airliner and sowing geopolitical tension. Farah and Alex, caught in the crossfire, swiftly erase traces of their involvement to avert a crisis. Forced into an uneasy alliance, Price seeks assistance from General Herschel Shepard and the supposedly deceased Philip Graves, both harboring their own motives. The group captures and interrogates Makarov's financier, Milena Romanova, and Connie operative Andre Nolan, leading to a daring interception of a convoy in Serbia. To their shock, the cargo is revealed to be Shepard, captive and coerced by Makarov. Confronted with a chilling ultimatum, Shepard discloses Makarov's grand scheme, the destruction of the Gora Dam in Verdansk to unleash catastrophic flooding. The narrative crescendos in a gripping climax, witnessing the sacrifice of soap to prevent Makarov's deadly machinations. The team scatters soap's ashes off a cliff in Scotland, commemorating their fallen comrade. Who dares wins? In a mid-credits scene, Price, assisted by Laswell, infiltrates Shepard's office, delivering a lethal reckoning for his treacherous actions in Mexico. Wouldn't do you any good. Thus, the epic saga concludes with Task Force 141 navigating a web of deception, betrayal, and sacrifice, leaving an indelible mark on the global stage. But let's flash forward to 2025, for Call of Duty Black Ops 2 kicks off, where David Mason is tracking Raul Mendez who grew an incredible influence between 2014 and 2021, and is now a big target for the Secret Services. Under the codename section, David leads a JSOC effort to neutralize Menendez. The latter plans a cyber attack using a rare earth element called Solerium, capable of creating a powerful computer virus. The team later learns about Menendez's interest in a hacker named Karma, and infiltrates a floating city named Colossus to rescue her. Menendez is captured in Yemen, but during interrogation, he escapes with the help of a mole. The crime lord then takes control of the American drone fleet, leading to attacks on major cities on June 19th, 2025. But Menendez is tracked to Haiti, inside a Cordis dye facility and is killed the same day. But after the Nicaraguan death, a video of him is released and results in an uprising by Cordis dye that causes massive public disturbance in Washington, DC. 
and leads to the collapse of the European Union in 2025 and later NATO in 2028, but more on that later. In 2030, we're back in the Call of Duty Ghosts timeline, where the US are no longer a superpower and the global power balance is a whole mess. The story follows US Army officer Elias Walker and his sons, Hesh and Logan, who become members of the Ghosts, an elite coalition fighting against the Federation. The Ghosts learn that the Federation, led by brainwashed former Ghost member Gabrielle Rourke, has hijacked a powerful orbital superweapon. The Ghosts embark on a mission to thwart the Federation's plans, leading to battles in various locations, including Antarctica and Rio de Janeiro. Despite significant victories, the Ghosts face capture and Elias is executed. In a final showdown, the US forces launch an all-out assault, destroying the Federation Space Center and reclaiming control of the orbital weapon. However, Rourke survives, captures Logan, and plans to brainwash him into becoming a Federation agent, setting the stage for a potential sequel that never came out, but certainly deserved to. Look at what you did. The year is 2054, and we're now following the path of Jack Mitchell in Call of Duty Advanced Warfare. Jiro Mitchell, can't be all that bad. After a North Korean invasion of Seoul, Mitchell loses his best friend Will and then loses his arm. After pressing F to pay respect, Mitchell joins the private military corporation Atlas, led by Jonathan Irons. The KVA, a terrorist group, poses a global threat, and Atlas becomes a dominant military force by aiding civilians and combating the KVA. However, Mitchell discovers that Irons orchestrated the KVA attacks to increase Atlas's power. Mitchell joins the Sentinel Task Force to stop Atlas, revealing Irons' plans to unleash a bioweapon called Manticore. The team thwarts Atlas's attempts to use Manticore and uncovers Irons' plot to attack the United States. A final battle ensues in New Baghdad, leading to Irons' death and Mitchell realizing the ongoing war against Atlas is close to an end. We take one last final stop in the Black Ops universe, this time between the year 2065 and 2070 for Call of Duty Black Ops 3. Prior to these dates, in the late 1950s, the US started secretly working on a mind-controlling AI weapon called Corvus. Here, we incarnate an unnamed member of the Winslow Accord Black Ops and undertake a successful mission in Ethiopia, rescuing hostages but leaving the player critically wounded. Saved by Taylor, the player undergoes cybernetic surgery and virtual training. Tasked with investigating a quiet CIA black site in Singapore, suspicions arise when the site is attacked by the 54 Immortals. The player and Hendrix discover Taylor's involvement and his search for the survivors of a past explosion. The journey takes them to a hidden CIA lab in Singapore where they encounter Diaz, leaking information. After rescuing Kane, the team heads to Egypt to find Dr. Salim revealing secret DNI experiments related to a mysterious frozen forest. Pursuing Taylor, they uncover Corvus, a malfunctioning intelligence infecting DNI users. In Cairo, Taylor resists Corvus, but Hendrix succumbs, killing Taylor and leaving the player. The quest continues to Zurich, where Corvus reveals its role in the Singapore explosion. Despite efforts to stop Corvus, Kane succumbs to Nova 6 gas. In Zurich, the player confronts Hendrix, who kills Kruger. In a desperate attempt to end Corvus, the player enters a simulated frozen forest. Surviving as a glitch, the player is guided by Taylor to resist Corvus's manipulation. With Taylor's assistance, the player purges their DNI, erasing the virus. Emerging from the Zurich headquarters, the player identifies as Taylor to security forces, bridging the gap between reality and the virtual realm. Which is totally not scary at all when you think of how responsibly we all exploit AI technologies today, right? Okay, well I think we've done everything, we can end this video here and... Wait, there's another one? We are in a distant future, the year is 2187 and the United Nations Space Alliance, UNSA, faces an attack by the Settlement Defense Front, SDF, on a weapons research facility on Europa. After the facility's destruction and the loss of a prototype weapon, Lieutenant Nick Reyes becomes the de facto captain of the UNSA ship Retribution. The story follows Reyes' efforts to counter the SDF's assault, including reclaiming the moon, delaying the enemy by destroying a fuel supply on Titan, and attempting to thwart a devastating signal beacon carried by an SDF agent. 
As the conflict escalates, Reyes commandeers the SDF flagship Olympus Mons, intending to destroy their shipyard on Mars. However, in a sacrificial final assault, both the Retribution and Olympus Mons crash onto Mars, and Reyes orders the destruction of the shipyard. The narrative concludes with Admiral Coop honoring Reyes, Salter, and the Retribution crew for their heroic sacrifice in a decisive victory against the SDF. And that sums up everything you need to know about the chronology and timelines in Call of Duty, a monument in the gaming industry which never ceased to seek new ways to immerse generations of players into depths of wars, either with impeccable writing or unbeatable gameplay. What's your favourite COD? Let us know in the comments!